Local program funding provided by a generous grant from Union Pacific. Union Pacific, building America. I'm Karen Hoyt, Marketing Director at Shasta Regional Medical Center, and we're proud to be part of the conversation that the forum at KIXE is bringing to our community. Shasta Regional has been around for more than 60 years supporting our community, and we would like to invite you to be a part of the forum on KIXE. Together, we can support the community that gives us back so much. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to the forum. I'm your host, Ashley Tate, here with my co-host, Christy Largent, and our guest host, Marty, Marty Mosley. Mosley. That's right, I'll third, jump in. Yes. The third. I yeah, don't make sure get it I wrong. Get that right. It's I a totally different guy. I was talking about your dad earlier. Yeah, I'm not my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind That's being. That's what everyone says, yes. Marty. Everyone says I'm not my dad. And we have a guest here with us today, as usual. We have the most interesting, Dan. Lance, and he's going to talk to us in a little bit about the rooster party. You're probably wondering, where on earth is Chris? And that we're kind of wondering the same thing. <laughs> where is he? Where are you, Chris? But he's in his buddy, Marty. And so we thought we'd introduce Marty a little bit before we get started this morning. Um, who are you and where are you from? Um, <laughs> I'm Marty. Uh, I'm from here. Yeah, are you uh, a I, local Redding guy? I am. My wife and I moved up here about five years ago, six years ago almost now. Okay. Um, I own a yoga shop up on Placer in Buena Ventura called The Social, and which I makes spend a lot of time with them, which yeah. makes... The best root beer floats. Non-dairy, by the way. Yeah. And we make all of the yogurt ourselves. Um, Non-dairy, no sugar added. It's all real ingredients you can get right here in, in Redding. And okay. delicious. It'll change your life. It does change your life. It'll change your life. Okay. <laughs> Well, we'll sign up for that. Yeah, yeah please that do. sounds fun. Thanks for coming in, though, today, seriously. Right? Absolutely, I'm happy yeah, to be here. You're, you're going to tell. He's fun, and it's good because we have a really fun topic Doing today. Fun. And Dan is part of the Rooster Party. Have you ever heard of the Rooster Party? I actually had never heard of it until I, I met either. a guy named Tyler Fares. And he said, oh, yeah, I'm part of the Rooster Party, and we're doing really fun things. Yeah. And so Ashley's like, we got to get them on the forum and yep. find out what it's all about. So, Dan, why don't you tell us a little bit about the genesis of it? How did it get started? What is it? What do you do? And um, so forth. So. All right. Um, the Rooster Party started a little over two years ago now. I went on a run, and uh, it was... February 11th of 2011, I remember that really clearly. Mm -hmm. I was, it was dark outside, I went on a run. I'm a little terrified of the dark, a little known <laughs> secret. And I was coming around the bend and there was roosters that were like going for it. And there was a moment where I just got stopped and I realized the, the reason those birds exist is to let you know the morning's coming and that it's gonna get better. And the light came up and I just had this, I was like, wow, it was an important, like day for me and my life really changed and I felt like I was supposed to start a, a nonprofit around that idea of hope like things are going to get better and so we started the rooster party and we've been helping um, creatives and adoptions raise funds for projects and for adoptions and uh, yeah that's what we've been doing helping promote them create community for them and stuff like that it all happened kind of like an avalanche too didn't it did you were up late, you ended up writing pages and pages of ideas. Yeah, I, I went on a run and two weeks later I came up, I had a dream, I just woke up and I wrote about 10 pages of notes. And at the end I, I woke up and told my wife, I was like, I don't know what just happened, but I feel like I know what I'm gonna do with the rest of my life. Oh, awesome, my gosh, that's, that's wow. amazing. And so yeah, from that time, everything's really changed for me. I'm now officially do the rooster party full time, so. Wow, yeah. how did you come up with the connection between creatives and adoptions? I mean, how did that, yeah. they're so far. I've been in so bands my whole through. life. Um, I've been around creatives. I helped run venues, things like that. So oh, okay. I know what, um, like when it comes to creatives and things like that, bands and artists, I, most of them are super talented, but they are either broke and they don't really have a platform. So. Yeah this is really an, a way to be able to enhance their message, get it out there. Um, we help support them with community, but also like funds to help like make albums, throw art shows, 
you know. Oh, how is it? A, is it a national, national program? <clears throat> I mean, do you have artists all over, or locally now, mostly in Reading? How a lot, you... a lot of local right now. Mm -hmm. we, we're actually right on the on the verge of creating the new website that will allow anybody to create a profile oh. to come in and say, "Hey, this is what I do. This is um, this is um, I'm, I'm a filmmaker. I I'm in a band. I'm an artist, and it'll you'll pop up on a map, so people will be able to connect and and meet through there, and ho hopefully be able to create like strategic touring pathways and stuff like that, like. Hey, I saw you over here, and, yeah. and be able to connect different people together. So, oh, wow. for um, for our viewers who are over thirty-five, uh, let's just clarify: what is a creative? Because you're like throwing <laughs> that word around, yeah. are the creatives, and it's I love me. it, and I'm kind of guessing what it is. But why don't you elaborate a little bit for those of us that are like um, over thirty-five? <laughs> that would include myself. So, but I. Um, when it comes to creative, I really believe everyone's creative, mm -hmm. and um, I feel like they all, whether it's creating like something amazing out of nothing, like mm -hmm. that's one form of creativity. But there's also people that order the chaos of the world, and there's the accountants and the teachers that make sense of things that are totally wild. And the yogurt and, shop owners. Yogurt absolutely. shop. Absolutely. Yeah. I would say it's kind of just more what drives you. Totally. You know, I wouldn't say I'm a creative as far as um, being able to decorate a room. But I think I'm very creative when it comes to trying to figure out, like, how am I going to get someone out there? Yeah. For, you know, what my passion is. That's what you're... Right. And a desire to bring passion. entertainment and, and exactly. bring, like, different stories to writing, things right. like that. So, yeah. so somebody that would be a part of the Rooster Party would be someone who has a passion for the arts. Sure. Would you say that? Yeah. And they want to be able to ex get more exposure, share their passion with other people. Mm -hmm. Would that be yeah, like absolutely. artists and, and singers <clears throat> and singers. other kind of musicians and... Yeah. Um, what about like jewelry makers or something like that? Really anybody could be a part of it, yeah. Up to this point, um, we really haven't had the vehicle to be able to incorporate everybody. We've had shows and things like that where we've been able to highlight people and different talents and things. Mm -hmm. But with the website, it's going to be actually a place where people can come together and be able to showcase what they do. So like a huge virtual community. You'll be, you'll be able to create a profile, this is who I am, this is how I like express my creativity and be able to connect with others that are doing Would that work with uh, people who maybe wanted help with their adoption? They'd sign up and create a profile and say, this is what I need help with. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the other side of it right now is the other thing that we're hoping to do is create community and be able to help fund adoptions. And so th that's one of the real tangible ways yeah. that you can bring hope to the world. So that was two of my kids are adopted. Yeah. And so that's a big part of my story. And so we, that was one of the things that we really wanted to help people with. And they can create, they can uh, fill out an application, they can um, come uh, get onto the website, and then we'll be able to set up a fundraising page for them oh, to yeah. be able to help, like, start. Mm -hmm. we're, we're selling shirts for them so that they can raise proceeds for that. Okay. And also, because we're a nonprofit, help them get tax deductible receipts, things like that. And then how would people get involved? If Say, if I, since I'm not very creative at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How would I how would I support you? Well, at this point, like the website is the perfect. The yeah, vehicle. kind of the big way to get up and be a part of it. You can find ways to donate there and stuff like that. Excellent. Well, w oh, sorry, no, I was go just ahead. gonna say with infertility, infertility kind of being such a big thing right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't want to say it's a buzz thing right now, but a lot of people are very open and dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Do you guys address any of that as far as I mean, because you've gone through it, so you yes. kind of know, and and you have a little sparkle at the end yeah. of your story. So yeah, yeah, fun to hear. Well, it's uh, part of what we want to do when, when it comes to the adoption piece of the website is be able to help people ask the right questions when it comes to adoption, things like that. It's mm -hmm. super overwhelming. <laughs> it's really expensive. It's really overwhelming. There's a ton of things you've got to like, uh, figure out. So we're trying to create like, a real streamlined process and a way for people to like... Do it kind of all in one place. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. And for us, that was a huge part of our story. For seven years, we struggled with that. We've adopted two, our first two children. Our third son kind of came out of nowhere, which is amazing. And so, <laughs> your biological, <laughs> biological son. son yeah. Biologically and came out of nowhere. And it's interesting because Correct. he's actually yeah. done it all three ways. Yeah. You've, you've gone domestic, you've adopted domestic, Correct. you've adopted international, international yeah. and you've, you've conceived your own yeah. biological child. Yeah. And are there, I mean, I'm sure you don't have many differences because you love them all the same. <laughs> yeah. You know, just more. It, it, it's an. A, it's having a family with all kinds of different um, backgrounds and stories is kind of amazing. My son Moses, who is biological to us, uh, a couple of days ago, he was, I overheard him in the other room, and he was saying he was talking to my daughter Sophia, and he was like, 
Hey, remember when I was when I was adopted, and like he he wants to share that story too because the other two kids do. So he like, I, I, it's a, it's an interesting dynamic. So you're very that. open with they do know that they've been adopted, yeah. and you're very open with them about that. Yeah, we try to make it a normal like part of our conversation. Oh, that's awesome. Not like over communicate yeah. it, but just make it a normal thing so yeah. it's never like this an is issue. a part of your story. Yeah. yeah. And Chris, Christy, you're kind of in the same position, so you probably <laughs> I'm really laughing understand. with my two Chinese children that are both adopted from China. And yeah, I mean, people say, do your kids know they're adopted? <laughs> I'm like, um, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, they have white parents. <laughs> so for us, it's like obvious, but right. I know in families where everyone looks alike, even with the adoption, yeah. I just think it's such a blessing to so many people what you're doing with the rooster party and the adoption leg, the part with the with artists who, mm -hmm. like you say, have so much trouble sometimes getting the word out there. Of course, you know you have to hook up with Stephen Curtis Chapman, who oh, has yeah, adopted has multiple yeah. times from China oh, wow. and is such a fine artist and world renowned. Really, yeah. um, we actually have an artist from the Rooster Party here with us this morning and or this evening, excuse me, and. We're going to get to hear him um, in a little bit. We're going to hear from him. But as a way of introduction, why don't you tell us a little bit about, we have about 30 seconds to yeah. tell us how Chris connected with you guys. Yeah, we met Chris uh, a couple years ago, and he was just an amazing talent. And we, he basically had just started, and we just loved what he brought and, and, had, and had a conversation with him, said, man, we've got to get your songs recorded. And so we were able to do that and help him fund those, those records. They're doing really well. And uh, he's being able to share his music with the world now. Oh, oh that is awesome. great. Well, I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. exciting. We're going to get to hear it. We're going to go to that in just a minute. And we just are so glad you're watching the forum. You know, we're all about interesting people doing interesting things. And that's what we've got to see here tonight. So stick with us. All right, and we're here with Chris Molitor, my friend and amazing musician. Uh, he's going to play us a little ditty. Uh, Chris, you haven't always been doing music, have you? This is, no. music is something kind of relatively new, right? Yeah, the last five or six years. It's yeah. been brand new. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, um, you were doing, you were traveling the country, and you were doing, like, video. I was. Correct me. I was, no, you're good. Okay, You're on the Thanks. right track. I was traveling the country, um, doing some filming, and yeah. then... Uh, I played a little bit of guitar at that point, mm -hmm. and I uh, I had this random guy walk up to me, and he's like, "Hey, like, I have this feeling that you're a musician," what? and I was like, "I promise, I'm not a musician." <laughs> I like I at that point, I mean, I had just gotten done playing basketball in college, like I was the athlete, so I was like, "I promise, I'm not a musician." And he's like, "I really feel like you're supposed to be a singer," and I thought it was the craziest thing ever. He just came up to you. It was super random, super bizarre. And then four hours later, the same thing happened again. Uh, I promise, it's the most bizarre thing. And uh, and he's like, that's funny. He's like, hey, this might sound weird, but are you a musician? And I'm like, no, I'm did not a musician. Did you have this look? I promise, because that's what someone asked me. Yeah, like, I, yeah, but you look like a musician. Yeah, you kind of do. I wore baggy jeans. I rock some Air Force Ones. What? Those are I, great, by like, the way. I, that was like my look slash Hollister. Is that, is that I, like a, a athlete look? Yeah, yeah. Okay. for sure. He's going through a serious Basketball transformation. Shoes. It was Basketball. weird. It was weird. Yeah. So then, then he's like, I feel like you're supposed to be a songwriter. So from that moment, it was like, I guess we'll try, try it. It, yeah. it just, it was just, <laughs> it was, it was too, it was too like, close together to yeah. be coincidence yeah. it was yeah. like uh, i think there's something to this oh. yeah. yeah and you listened and so how'd you connect up with the rooster party yeah well i moved to reading uh two years ago and then uh just that was my first my first gig ever was in reading two years ago i'd never played a show before where'd I mean, you play uh, i different? played at vintners downtown just the wine bar and, oh yeah uh, yeah and i love those guys like they welcomed me in um, and just started getting asked to play more and more um <laughs> just started beginning my career in music yeah. after never Having sang or wow. wrote a song before I was 23 at the time when I started. So then, um, and then you met Dan somehow. I met Dan um, and uh, got connected with the Rooster Party. I performed at the first Rooster Party event. Oh wow! And uh, and I I had been thinking to myself like how cool it would be to work with someone like Dan Lance yeah. on music because every musician you're struggling every day to keep going. You know, like you just want to like okay, I I believe in myself. But you play a gig and there's two people there and it's it's like you're, you're crushed. You want to yeah. just like burn your guitar in the backyard and never sing a song yeah. again. Yeah. And so for to have someone like Dan Lance who's been in the music industry, he's been there before. Like he's 
he's a little bit older than I am, so you know he has more life experience. It's a lot older. Yeah. For someone, <laughs> for someone like him to say like, I believe in you. Like I yeah. see what you're doing. I love uh, who you are. I love what your music is. I want to invest in you. Mm-hmm. Like for someone to not just be all talk, but right. to, to actually say, like, do it. Yeah, yeah. I actually want to like invest real money to produce real albums yes. and actually Aww. get your name out there and get your music out there. That was life changing. You know? And so he gave you a platform and now you get, now you have a CD. Totally. I right? have two so, CDs. Two CDs. Oh two my gosh. CDs. Wow. They, they ranked really high on iTunes, didn't they? Yeah. We released wow. two CDs last year. Um, the first one hit number 16 on the iTunes Singer Songwriter chart. Wow. Wow. Just, wow. Congratulations. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. We, we all freaked out. I was running around the house just dancing. <laughs> yeah. It was great. What yeah. are they called? Uh, what are the they're names? called, they're, the first one's called The Dawn, um, okay. and the second one's called The Dusk. Oh. Um, and so it's kind of this two part uh, album that we put out, and uh, it's been a blast getting to share the songs with people. That yeah. is amazing. Mm-hmm. So you're going to get to share with us. Um, pretty pretty quick here, mm-hmm. and what tell us about the song you're gonna sing? Yeah, it's uh, it's one of the songs from the first album, The Dawn. This song is called "You're My Baby." It's a simple little love song. Um, the funniest thing is that this is one of my oldest songs that we recorded, and so part of uh, part of the the funniest of it is as an artist, you're progressing, you're growing, you're you're writing better songs, hopefully, and then. For this, this is the one song that did the best on iTunes. Oh, Everyone's God. like, play You're My Baby. And so it's uh, it's just a fun little love song. Um, and uh, I, I really enjoy playing this one. Well, really quick, it. what's it like to have people look down on you? Like right now in yeah, this moment? Because yeah. I, I don't think I've ever looked at you from <laughs> you this angle before. You really <laughs> super tall. I'm usually <laughs> hugging head to chest with you, but I feel like right now we could do that. You're all at height finally. It feels good. It feels okay. good. It feels like things are evened out now. I feel like they are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are excited to get him started, and we are ready to hear this song. All right, Chris Muller. You're my baby. Hey. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Oh, baby, look outside. The sun just said good morning. Not a great cloud in the sky Oh, what a wonderful feeling And baby, close your eyes Hear the songbirds whistling Thin like summer time. Just gotta tell you what I'm feeling. Cause you're the one that makes my knees go weak. Love's never felt this way before. One look, my heart skips a beat. You got me begging for more. Tell me it'll always be this way. Tell me that you're here to stay. Well, I have thought about it only. One name will do for you, you're my baby. Yeah, you're my baby. Oh, you're my baby, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're my baby. The stars are shining bright. Hear the crickets chirping oh, And baby, hold me tight Oh, what a wonderful feeling Cause you're the one that makes my knees go weak Love's never felt this way before One look, my heart skips a beat You got me begging for more well, Tell me it'll always be this way Tell me that you're here to stay Well, I have thought about it And only one thing will do for you I'd give anything for you Oh, my heart is yours and yours alone And anything you ask 
God I'll do All my promises Yeah they are sure And baby Please take my hand And don't Oh don't let it go Don't let it go You're my baby, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're my baby. You're my baby. Yeah. Woo! Oh, that was that so was amazing. Cool. Chris. Thank you. Wow. You nailed Thank it. So Thanks. Stand back up here Thanks. with us. That was just awesome. You can see the CDs that you can find, yep. iTunes. Yep. You can also go to the Rooster Party dot the rooster party dot org mm -hmm. and you'll find out a lot more about this amazing organization and all the good things that you guys are doing so and love 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 that what do you guys want to oh i just wanted to, to say add? thank you so much i mean you've you've highlighted some local talent i mean who would have known that we had this here in reading you kind of have like a jack johnson feel i hope that's not offensive no, to it's say not offensive at all. i love jack johnson so i think <laughs> i think it's a great Thanks. beautiful song thank yeah you. i've known and these guys you. for a little while and they're the real deal and i Thanks, guys. You yeah. guys are, you guys are doing what you deal. really believe in, and that's, that's something great to support. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You, have, um, you know, you think about all the ways that there are to be involved in stuff here in the North State. We have so many different venues, and it's exciting to hear about something like the Rooster, the rooster Party that's not political, uh, not a political party, right. but more of a humanitarian um, Absolutely. Mission. Yeah. Mission, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's really, un, you know, we're missing that, and, and you guys are bringing it. And Dan, your vision and taking the vision that you felt called to follow, I mean, that's an inspiration really for all of us. Mm -hmm. It absolutely Whether is. it's music or the arts or um, a ba adding a baby to your family. Mm -hmm. I mean, personally, I think it's pretty awesome. So we're really glad. So, you know, this has been such a fun uh event yeah, today. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know, word event, but the forum is always here for you. We're going to be doing all kinds of interesting things for for you to learn about, different people in the North State, different activities in the North State. If you hear a, about an event that the Rooster Party is doing, you definitely want to go. Absolutely. And, for um, more people like him. Gosh, yeah, I'm really excited and love this. Please go to our Facebook page, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Local program funding provided by a generous grant from Union Pacific. Union Pacific, Building America. I'm Karen Hoyt, Marketing Director at Shasta Regional Medical Center, and we're proud to be part of the conversation that the forum at KIXE is bringing to our community. Shasta Regional has been around for more than 60 years supporting our community, and we would like to invite you to be a part of the forum on KIXE. Together, we can support the community that gives us back so much. Thank you.